So this year we see the introduction of Autodesk's web-based services, Autodesk 360. So what is it? Autodesk 360 is a cloud-based platform that helps you dramatically improve the way you work with virtually infinite computing power with the ability to work anytime and anywhere. The key benefits being virtually infinite computing resources, improved collaboration, more mobility and reduced costs. So as you can see, there's a vast offering with support for a number of different Autodesk products and associated disciplines. And here I've highlighted those we're going to look at more today, starting with Autodesk Cloud Documents, the hub of everything 360. New users are provided with three gigabytes of data storage, whereas subscription customers benefit from a 25 gigabyte limit per user. And one of the great things is that you can view documents, drawings, and 3D models directly within the cloud, purely using your web browser, allowing everyone to review data regardless of whether viewers are installed. Of course, being located on the cloud provides you with the benefit of using the mobile apps to view, edit, and manage files whilst out on the go with either your iPhone, iPad, or Android device utilizing the free downloadable apps. Files can be shared publicly or privately, allowing you to easily keep control of who can see what and when. So let's take a closer look. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to log into Autodesk 360 from within Revit. All we need to do is input our username and password and select the sign in option. Now signing can be confirmed at the top right hand side by the icon changing to blue. And once signed in we can obtain additional information with regards to our account, uh, such as how much space we've uh, still available within the cloud, and how many cloud units we may have used for things like rendering. Now within the 2013 product range we've also got the option to go to the view tab and render direct to the cloud. In addition to this, we can also publish out in a number of different formats, whether it be SAT, DGN, DXF, DWG, or DWF, and send those files directly to Buzzsaw. Okay, so within AutoCAD, again within the drop down, uh, we can see that we have a number of options. What's unique to AutoCAD is online options. So as you'll see within your options dialog box now you have a new online tab and of course you can access this in a number of different ways. If we go through the standard method of going into the options button we can enable cloud storage. This gives us the ability to be able to back up directly to the cloud automatically alternatively as and when we want to. Utilizing this, we can select a folder that we want to back up to. So here we can see a list of folders within the cloud. So we might create a new one called AutoCAD Backups to automatically back up upon save. We've also got the option to synchronize settings. So you can either synchronize all your settings. Or alternatively, you can synchronize those specifically selected. So by selecting this option here and then choosing, we can pick it may be just a case that you want to uh, customize your templates. Okay, so if we were to uh, come to the Save As option now, or the Save, uh, as you'll see, it's grayed out drawing to the cloud because currently we've got the option switched off. But again, if we go back into the Options tab, and switch this on. We've here got it selected to manually back up. So again, all we would do is use the drop down, select save as, and draw into the cloud would upload that copy of the drawing as well. So we log into Inventor in the same way as we've seen within the other products. Uh, within Inventor, of course, we create uh, many more files than what we do within the, the other products such as AutoCAD and Revit. And by expanding the browser here, you can kind of appreciate as to how many files we need to gather up if we want to upload them to within the cloud. Well, within Inventor, we have a new online tab. And within here, we've got save and send to cloud. So this is very much the same as a pack and go whereby it will go away, find all of the piece parts, sub-assemblies and top-level assemblies, gather it all together, along with any library parts, design data and templates, and then allow us uh, the ability to be able to then save and send and upload directly to the cloud from within Inventor. 
We've also got the option here to go into Autodesk 360. So this takes us to the web browser where we can directly uh, log in to our 360 account. So you log in with your username and password as we did before. Now after logging into Autodesk 360, you're initially shown the activity stream. So the idea of this is that it gives you information as to who's been viewing data, downloading data, or uploading data, making modifications. And we can look at this for today, over the last week, or maybe over the last month. And we can also group it by date, activity type, or connection. On the right hand side we've got some additional filters, so we may want to look at all activity types, new and updated items, comments and markups, or deleted items. It may be a case that we only want to uh, look at activity from certain project members. On the right hand side we've got links to some of the 360 benefits that you might obtain under subscription. And if we select the link just here, we can have a look at more information with regards to those specific benefits. If I go to account details, this is where we can customize uh, our account by you know, adding our sort of photograph, putting background information in, seeing as to how much space we've got left within our account and how many cloud units we've utilized. So from the Home tab, we can then move over to Documents. So this is where we see the folders. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is create a new folder. For the purposes of this demonstration, we'll call it Autodesk 360 Demonstration. And the next thing I'm going to uh, do is to show you how you can quickly add files. So it's dead easy. Uh, you select your folder, and as you can see up the top left-hand side here, we've got an Upload button. So by simply choosing this, there's two ways you can do it. Uh, if we open up Windows Explorer uh, and navigate to uh, a set of files, so if, if there's kind of more than one file that you want to, to add, it's much more efficient to do it in this manner. So we can kind of shift select the files that we want to upload and simply drag and drop them uh, into the uh, dialog. Alternatively, if it's just the one file, let's remove these and we can select documents again and pick up, in this case, a, a DWFX file and then select Upload. So after selecting a file, uh, down the bottom of the screen we get information with regards to who we're sharing that file with, which we're going to come back to a bit later on. Uh, on the right hand side we have Recent Activity, so this shows who's uploaded, downloaded and viewed, viewed uh, that file, along with any correspondence. We can download, or alternatively view the 3D model directly within the cloud. We get access to all the usual tools we're familiar with, so being able to pan, zoom and orbit the model. What we're also able to do is to select an object and we can actually look at the properties for that particular object. In this case I may want to know what the structural member is uh, used in this particular example. So the next thing we're going to look at is categorization. And in this example we're going to create a new category to uh, associate to a particular project 10154. Now categories are there to be able to group data together regardless of what folder those files may be stored in. So in this case we're going to go to the DWF file that we uploaded earlier and we're going to tag that file to this particular project. As you can see on the left hand side of the screen that project now shows one file and rather than go and navigate for the files what we might want to do is to utilize the search capability within 360. So here we're going to look for IPT files created within Inventor and again tag a number of files to associate to that project. So files can be tagged individually or by group. Again on the left hand side we can now see four files associated to that project and again we may search for an alternative file format such as a photograph and individually tag that.
Again, on the left hand side, we up the count to five files. By selecting the link on the left hand side, it will then summarize all of the files associated to that particular project.